Hello there, it's Jennifer McCreeth on uh, Tuesday night, January 3rd, 2012. Oh my, I'm in a little better mood than I was yesterday. I think that was the greatest rant of all time. Uh, if you haven't seen it, click around and find it. Uh, it's not too often I get that fired up. Uh, anyway, let's move on to today. Um, the long-awaited debut of ABC's brand new TV show, Work It. A show, uh, a fictional show, uh, that portrays two men who cannot get a job unless they try to live their life as women. And magically, uh, by dressing up as women, they are totally accepted and offered jobs and welcomed into this work environment and are accepted as women, are 100% passable, supposedly. Um, very unrealistic. Um, at the same time, though, I think uh, if you sit back and watch that show, there's some, there's some good lessons to learn in there. Um, the show does uh, use humor to poke fun at uh, gender norms and gender stereotypes and even gender discriminations. Um, almost by using, what would you say, reverse, I won't say reverse psychology, but reverse something. Um, I guess it, it emphasizes the male traits and the female traits, or better, shall I say, the man traits and the women traits, and how, I guess, difficult it can be for each other's gender to understand each other, if that makes any sense. Um, the main, the lead character, um, you got this guy trying to live life as a woman, and he uh, is obviously like a fish out of water, and... Uh, at the same time, he learns, I guess, about how his wife feels in terms of how he neglects her and goes to the bar and drinks beer all the time and just seems to want sex. Um, yeah, it's... I don't know what really where I'm going with this interview. Um, I guess my main concern was that uh, the show would somehow inappropriately mix or confuse the viewer between uh, drag and trans. Um, it's clearly not a drag show or not a cross-dressing thing per se. It's more of a silly I ideology, I guess. Um, I don't know. I just... I hope that when people watch this show or this episode, there's only been one episode, that uh, maybe they will come away with some under appreciation and understanding of the challenges all trans people face whether you're a, a full-time transsexual who's gone through hormone surgery or someone who's just starting the process or if you're a beautiful cat like this one right here hi Danny hi now got any more who's that over there that's Scooter the hamster running in the wheel what do you think Dan now, if, if I told you, Dan, that you had to be a hamster in order to get your, your cat treats tonight, do you think you could pull it off? Think you could wear that makeup? <coughs> there we go. The video's complete now that we've had an animal interlude. Um, um, I guess I'm just trying to find positives. Um, there's a lot of concern, and rightfully so, uh, based on the trailers we saw. Um, and how the uh, protagonist, is that the right word, the main character, fears that they would uh, help spread myths that are not appropriate regarding what transsexualism is all about. But realistically, this show, is, it's not about trans, it's not about drag, it's not about any of that. It's not, it's very kind of stupid, actually. Fictional. I don't think anywhere in the world you will see this actual thing happen. Um, if anything, women should be upset and concerned that uh, the only place where, the only world that's dominated by women in terms of the business world is in a fictional TV show. I just read the news today. Um, it was talking about how it's January 3rd and already some of the, the highest paid CEOs in Canada have already earned more money in two business days than most of you watching this video will make an entire year and 
It also went on this news article to explain that only one out of the top 100 paid CEOs in Canada is a woman. So, there you go. There's reality. ABC, that's fiction. And uh, reality kind of sucks, to be honest. And I don't know if we should be offended at, at this fictitious TV show or if we should take advantage of this and use it as a wake-up call to say, you know what, folks? Maybe there still are double standards out there. Maybe there is sexism. And uh, there's clearly, uh, what's the word? Hetero and cis normative. Um, you'll notice that uh, the uh, co-workers of the, uh, the cross-dressed men characters uh, who supposedly assumed and accepted them as women, they assumed that, oh, well, you're a woman, well, you must have a husband, well, let's see. And uh, they did mention the word lesbian once, but it was kind of a, a negative shot towards uh, a stuck-up uh, boss that appeared to have no personality. So definitely a bit of a, a cheap shot at the lesbian community in there. And... Uh, I don't know, I, I just, I'd rather, I, I'm not one to watch TV, I'm not into fiction, I like reality, um, I watch the news, I watch sports, um, when people are out there on the, on the football field, for example, that's a real athletic competition, people really are throwing a football, those injuries are real, the, the happiness, the drama of, of winning, none of this crazy fictitious stuff, it just doesn't seem to work for me, um, I guess one the one thing I could relate to with that TV show, that episode, was just the, uh, you could tell the tension, the nerves that the male characters had, how, uh, how, how much anxiety they had trying to pull this off, trying to be a woman, trying to be accepted in the world as a woman, and I think we all as human beings want acceptance, and, uh, here I am, more than four years full time, and uh, I still feel that I don't have that. Um, I still feel that I kind of stand out, and that I'm people keep me at arm's length. Um, I don't see the friendliness happening happening at any of the jobs I've had since I've come out and gone full time. Um, I don't see groups of people inviting me to lunch. Uh, I don't see people buying me handbags either. Um, not that I necessarily go and seek that, but uh, I guess people are probably going to be looking for harsh reactions from the trans community. Um, I'm sure if you Google around by now, there's going to be a lot of people who hate the show, who say it's bad, It's and who knows, there might be some in the trans community that like it. Uh, I'm also anxious to see what, uh, I guess, members of the gay and lesbian and particular drag queen community to see what they might think of the show. Um, again, I don't think the characters in the show are congruent with any of us. I think this is a, a fictitious concept that's been made up totally on its own. Um, how long will this TV show last? Everyone's suggesting that it's going to fail miserably. Um, I honestly don't know. Um, I really don't care. Um, I will tune in to the next episode, mostly out of curiosity. As, a, I guess, an advocate, I'm kind of always kind of on the edge, looking for opportunities to strike, shall we say. But uh, I guess at this point, I need to see more to, to really gain an understanding as to what this show is trying to do. What are they trying to prove? What message are they really trying to um, convey here? Um, there you go. There you have it. There's my first gut initial reaction. I just turned the camera on. I didn't write any notes or plan. I really had no idea what I was going to say. I just thought I would give you an open and honest reaction to what, uh, I guess, feelings I have after watching this much uh, anticipated controversial show. Um, anyways, thanks for watching me here tonight. Um, and thank you to my my colleagues uh, Danny and Scooter for making this video even more exciting. Have a nice night.